Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another lesson on workspace planning. In this lesson, I'm going to be showing an actual IWP, the various sections that are available in this IWP, and where to look to find what. A bit about myself. Uh, my name is Cheka Souf. I have 22 years of experience on site. I'm active subject matter expert in workplace planning, and mainly I have uh, some uh, acceptable or let's say good development skills in on top of Forge and Python and so on. In the picture you see when workface planning is misused. It will be used basically to optimize a requirement of management that not in line with the project requirement. So here you see some uh, in some project they have decided to cast the pedestal but keeping away the pier and this require later on a bunch of scaffolding lots of form work and delayed mainly the whole project okay so the installation work package is made of many sections we will start with basically the cover page we can see we have titles like the number and what's the description of this IWP, what's the purpose and so on. And later you see that you have the scope description, uh, some key figures in the summary, the important part are the quantities and the man hours and what's the average crew size. We can see also the signature, the sign of uh, location where people will sign or approve whether it is draft or issued for construction and whether it is completed. Now you notice in the issued for construction you need the approval of the company because mainly if they sign it means they guarantee that the material and the drawing are up to date and latest. We can see also here a small uh, table which represent what permit to work required in order to achieve this one and if you need scaffolding or not and here we can see what resources we need whether it is equipment any special tool and who are the people I found it a good practice to add D after every sort of resources that is direct because these are the hour that will be cross-checked against the planned man hours to see because like for example a flagman or a scaffolder in many projects they are not considered direct resources so you do not count them okay now this basically is the second page of the IWP it have the table of content we can see work step constraint list predecessor and so on bill of material and a bunch of attachment so let's go first to the work steps uh, when we say work steps in many of the tools it means what are the steps that you need to do in order to achieve the completion of your IWP so in this case you notice that sometimes they confuse the material with the work steps and this mainly keep the workface team uh, confused what we did is we devised a new approach where you put the various entry that you need to install with their reference to the bill of quantities and then what is the unit of measure and then you put like the rules of credit what you need to do and when this can play two roles the first one it helps the site team to report properly this is on one hand on the other hand he knows what is the size of this job like when i see a certain beam of 700 kilos i know what i'm talking about when we talk about constraint list mainly if you notice most of the tools in the market they have a very timid let's say constraint management list this is why most of the companies they go and get another system to manage it for instance we can see here like okay uh, construction drawing check for latest ifc status here we just tick true or false but in reality if you go just here you will have one single constraint with so many 
let's say property and the most important part is who is it assigned to and which company to be able to follow them up so this is also another let's say improvement we made on managing workplace planning where you use an actual application to manage constraint rather than a small checklist that cannot be really tracked now another important part is to know what are the predecessor work now in the predecessor work uh, you notice like they put just one small statement whether this iwp has predecessor work or not but we notice also that this approach have missed many of the activities especially if you're working working underground for instance if there is any excavation it's not mentioned that it is a predecessor and this have caused a bunch of delay in our installation work packages and this is why we decided to add those predecessor activity part of our front end loading checklist which will appear in a few slides also you can see you will need the drawing list now i want to emphasize here that the drawing list that are available in those tools in the market it tell you what is the drawing but there is a very important part in those drawings that you need to do some highlights. For instance, this red square here is showing where the job will start. The other red square here, it shows you where to find the detail of this specific item. If you want to put this red lining on an official drawing, it's not really practical. And if any revision come on the main drawing, you will be notified on the main drawing, but the rest are not notified. And this is where and the importance of having some sort of proper link with some highlighting or red marking on the drawing or temporary red marking now the contractor checklist normally we call it front end loading checklist in this checklist if you notice you have many uh, let's say items that you need to follow it is safety, QC, construction, and so on. And the most important part also, we added into this checklist the previous job or the previous work that need to be completed by other team for this one to start. Okay, by this, I conclude the lessons. Uh, wait for our uh, next video, which will be using an actual tool to manage the workplace planning. Thank you for your attention.